I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi family, thank you for tuning in all around the nations to this week's episode of Live Your Best Life with of course me Liz Wright and I'm extremely excited about my conversation today with my dear friend and special guest who you are going to be very very inspired by. She's the founder and the director of Hope Nazareth which is the house of prayer in Nazareth of course in Israel And she's a woman of great love, great experience, who for many, many years has been very strategic in Israel in helping to bring about reconciliation between Arabs and Jews, amongst many, many other things. She's She's been leading a move of the spirit with the youth. She's been empowering women to take their position as mothers in the land. I mean, she's just an extraordinary woman of God. I was with her, had the privilege of speaking there. Uh, in September and of last year and it was just profound and life-changing and extremely moving and humbling to see the fruit of her relationship with Jesus. So it is my absolute joy. I'm super excited to be able to welcome into the conversation with me today, Rania Sag. Rania, welcome. Thank you so much, Liz. It's such an honor to be always with you and we miss you already. I know I miss being there I love it I love it Israel is my happy place in the entire world and just to be able to be in Nazareth in the but you know in the the hometown of Jesus the cradle of Christianity I mean it's just amazing I love it I mean, Nazareth if you, if you guys get the opportunity to visit Nazareth it is absolutely life-changing okay I wanted to start Rania by asking you what was it like for you to grow up in Nazareth yeah well uh that's an exciting question. Uh, mm, you know, yeah. I've, been, I've been raised up to a Greek Orthodox family. So I've been, you know, a Christian. But uh, when we say Greek Orthodox family in the land, uh, I'm talking about, you know, a, a living as a nominal Christian, not really knowing the Lord uh, and, and having a relationship with Jesus. So I've been born into this nominal Christian family who didn't know the Lord and been raised up. Uh, as an Arab uh, Christian in the land. And uh, I met Jesus when I was 16 years old. And that's when I met him in my Baptist uh, school where, where I used to study. Uh, and that was basically the beginning of my journey with him. Uh, it's, it's really being raised up as an Arab. It wasn't, of course, easy in the journey. And that uh, includes uh, the a lot of challenges, you know, being an Arab, being a Christian, talking about minorities in the land of Israel, um, being in the middle of the conflict um, between both the Jew and the Arab, being raised up, hearing the stories and uh, knowing the stories of my father's forefathers who have actually witnessed um, also the war in 1948 because my forefathers were uh, uh, there, rooted in Nazareth before also the establishment of Israel. As a nation, so it's all these dynamics of mm. being an Arab, a Christian, also you know, and also a minority in the land, because Christian Arabs are a real minority inside a minority inside a minority, mm. and the re- the reason I say this is because of the percentages of the population we are belonging to, because we are the the Christian Arabs are are only two and a half percent. Uh, of the population of Israel. And within that, there is only 2% that are believers. So we're really a minority inside a minority. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. this is very challenging situation. Uh, and uh, uh, being a minority, being inside uh, uh, a nation that is actually in a war, I would say, we are, we are a nation in a war uh, uh, because the conflict has not ended since the establishment of Israel as a nation since 1948 and we have witnessed that we have been part of it as this generation and that this still this generation is still experiencing that so all this uh, have really led me uh, after knowing the lord to begin to seek god on my own personal prophetic destiny 
And why in the world that he would choose that I will live in Nazareth, uh, being a Christian, being an Arab, being a minority, having all these challenges around me, uh, living in the middle of a conflict, uh, living in a place that I would say not necessarily feeling liked or being welcomed in the land because of being a minority, because of sensing I am a second class citizen, all of these things uh, that are not a, a easy for a, a teenager <laughs> or even a young person to live in the middle of uh, such uh, difficulties. So yeah. in, in the midst of that, of course, the Lord, you know. Mm. Okay, yeah. that's okay. There's, I know that we've talked before about how Jesus led you and the literal life changing encounter that you had that changed everything and answered your question, right? Like, why have you, why have I been born here, Jesus? Why am I in the land? Why am I in the, I am a, a minority in the middle of all of these very complex situations? So, will you share with us, Ronia, what happened to you when Jesus visited you? Because it's absolutely profound yes yes and in fact really it's it started Liz, since i met the lord my personal relationship with him started since i was 16 years old yeah and i actually been walking with jesus for 32 years now so it's it's a privilege to be able to be with him and know him because i actually uh, was longing for a life change you know i wanted Mm -hmm. to have an experience with Jesus. And I began to look for him since I was 12 years old. So when I was 12 years old, I wanted to know who was that man that I read about in the Gospels who walked my city, did, the Bible says, did few miracles, but he did miracles. I began to fall in love with that man who walked my city, but who was such an amazing man, who has changed so many lives all over the world, and he died for me and he loved me so much. And 12 years old girl, I was beginning to look for my destiny. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't meet him yet until four years after looking for uh, answers. 16 years old, I met him downtown Nazareth in the school where I studied. And there the Lord uh, began to change my life upside down. And this is when I encountered him first, of course, as my savior, as my lover, and I uh, began to really fall in love with him. And he told me that he wanted me to be his lover, that it is not about serving him only, it's about loving him, that I am to be a lover of Jesus. And that would be the center of my life. That would be the center of all that I do that would come out of that place. So I always share my story by saying that I am a woman who fell in love with the hometown boy. So <laughs> it's 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 a story of love uh, that changed my life forever. And basically, the Lord, of course, you know, took me into other encounters. The first encounter is seeing him, meeting him, downtown Nazareth, as my savior, and uh, then contending to to know for why what is my destiny lord what do you want me to do what is on your heart i want to follow you i want to obey you um, and and you know i was longing all all the time there was this deep longing that i want to see history changed in my nation uh, the longing began that he began to uh, put this deep passion in my heart to see a move of the spirit revival uh, a change in, in my nation, a change in the city of Nazareth, uh, a transformation of a city, uh, 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 you know, a breaking out of a move of the Holy Spirit, miracles, signs, and wonders would be restored to his hometown because he couldn't do a lot of miracles, the Bible says. And I was wondering, Lord, how can I be part to see this redemption, the, what you are longing to see in your city, what you couldn't do uh, while you were in your city, walking the city, now you're longing to see this generation yeah. doing what you couldn't do because you said, greater we shall do. Yeah. So this is when he began to meet me uh, and these encounters with him to show me his heart and the destiny that I have to go in the past that he has set before me, you know. Mm -hmm. So that encounter, of course, uh, was um, uh, 
uh, especially with the heart that he gave me for my nation. Yeah. There has been a lot of other different encounters. But one of the encounters that I would say has have changed my life and actually set the course for my ministry too and opened for me favor and doors to be able to reach also uh, uh, our beloved Jewish family here in the land is that encounter that where he baptized me with love. Yes. And I remember uh, that encounter uh, very well when, when I was you know, seeking him and loving him. And, you know, uh, uh, as I always do, used to worship the Lord and um, uh, just, you know, love on him, say words of love to him. And I remember one day as I was uh, doing that, I hear a voice uh, behind me saying, you do not love me. And I shake the voice because I thought this is the enemy interfering in my relationship with Jesus. So I rebuke the voice. And, and again, I hear the voice again comes, you do not love me. I continue to worship the Lord and I continue to uh, be a warrior and rebuke the voice of the enemy. And again, I didn't know that was actually rebuking the voice of the Lord speaking to me. And he was saying, you do not love me. And then now I engage with the conversation. And I say, Lord, is it, this is your voice speaking to me. What, what, why are you saying I do not love you? He said, Ramya, you do not love me. You are saying words, but you do not love me. And I said, Lord, I'm, I'm trying to be truthful as much as I can. Uh, this is what I know to love you as I, you know, you told me to open up a house of prayer, to, um, mobilize worship and prayer for you to be an intercessor, to be a watchman on the walls of this nation of Israel. And that's what I'm trying to obey you to do. Why you, you say, I do not love you? He said, no, Rania, you do not love me because you do not love my family. And I thought, Lord, why, why you say, I do not love your family? I go to church, I put my ties, I do everything that I know to do. Uh, and I have no issues, relational issues, or any conflicts with anyone. I have peace with everyone in the church. Now, a little I didn't, I didn't understand what the Lord really was saying by him, saying his family. And in that moment, it hit me deep. And I said, Lord, what do you mean I do not love your family? He said, I do not love my family because you do not love my Jewish family. This mm. is my personal family. This is my biological family. And all of the sudden, Liz, it's like a revelation hit me deep inside my spirit. Uh, it was like, wow, that man that I fell in love with, who is this amazing, beautiful man from Nazareth, who is my savior, my lover, my redeemer, he is a Jewish man from Nazareth. Yeah. Yeah. He was a Jew, and he has a family. And he said to me, Rania, you are my bride. There is no bride that wants to get married to, uh, uh, to her bridegroom would just say, you know, uh, I love you to the, to the bridegroom, and then reject his family. Mm -hmm. If you love your bridegroom, you will honor his family. And in that moment, that was, I would say, a life-changing revelation. Yeah. that hit me deep and in that moment I remember uh, you know really falling on my knees and, and just repenting before the Lord because I didn't know no. uh, that I had all these pains all these layers of pain and offenses in my heart towards our Jewish family because of what we witness because of what we hear in the media because of all what's taking place our daily lives also sometimes all these uh, conflicts that take place, you know, uh, even mm. even some injustices that you encounter on daily life. Okay, mm. Mm. it's growing things. up in Israel. It's growing up in Israel. Mm. You know, doing your daily life in Israel. I always say to people, when you land in Israel, that the, the first spirit that would say hi, welcome, is the spirit of offense. If you're not prune, if you don't deal with offense in your heart, this will hit you instantly because. Uh, everybody is like, if, you know, they're, they're somehow being influenced by a spirit of offense. 
And apparently, people who are offended will end up offending people. So it's like a cycle of uh, of things, a spiritual cycle of attacks on people's minds, hearts. And that's, I remember when the Lord said to me, Rania, I want you to live and offend him. And in that mm. moment, I fell on my knees. I began to repent before the Lord for the attitude of my heart towards the Jewish people. Gosh, and that took me yeah. layers, layers yeah. of taking layers off of my heart through prayer, through fasting, through seeking his heart about my prophetic destiny as an Arab in the land, the prophetic destiny of the Jewish people, asking the Lord to give me his heart for his family, his heart for his people. How do you want me, Lord, to look to see your pe- the, the, the family? How do you want me to see your people, the Jewish people? And that was definitely uh, less needed to be a supernatural grace and yeah. a supernatural encounter with Jesus for his love for his family. Yeah. And I, so, so after that happened, what happened next? Because I know obviously the Lord gave you his heart and you've been carrying his heart and moving in the reconciliation movement, helping to heal the relationships profoundly across Israel between Jewish people and and Arabic people ever since then. So what started to happen, Rania? What what did your ministry begin to look like straight after the Lord gave you his heart like this and healed you? Yes, it was uh, another level. Uh, this like, uh, uh, first of all, my intercession, you know, I'm talking now about my personal life, was yeah. transformed. Yeah. First of all, I could sense the liquid love of Jesus when I speak about his family. My heart's transformation, you know, mm-hmm. and not only that, I remember when he poured out his love, he actually baptized me with his love. I remember uh, in that moment, I wanted to get out of the house and just go and find another Jewish person and just keep on loving on them and hugging them mm-hmm. and express my love for them and that I am standing with them, that I love them and I want to see them healed and restored and walk in their full destiny. Yeah. Definitely all this heart transformation had results and had uh, 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 incredible implications and also has expanded our ministry in a major way because yeah. it has opened for me doors and favor with our Jewish family. As I began to move and just obey him step by step of what he wanted me to do, and uh, this includes inviting our Jewish family into Nazareth, honoring our Jewish family by being together in a place of worship, in a place of prayer, uh, uh, different events that were pivotal for the land, I believe, and I believe has shifted history here in the land of Israel, which brought deep reconciliation and launched us as one body, launched us into a place of corporate unity, uh, uh, that released really uh, the oil of the Holy Spirit over the land. I sensed uh, uh, the, the the move of the Holy Spirit in a new way, way in our house of prayer. That took us to another level, you know. But I have contended and prayed to the Lord this for at least uh, five years after the establishment of the house of prayer because I was contending for revival. So, okay, here I am praying, worshiping, as about his spirit. And because I want to see miracles, signs, and wonders, I want to see Jesus, you know, uh, ministry, the miraculous ministry of Jesus being restored mm-hmm. into his homeland. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, uh, little did I know that uh, my heart was not prepared for it. So, so he wanted, he actually, some of this part of his answer, for revival that I'm contending for is the change of heart I needed to have uh, and the attitude and the love that I needed to receive from him to be baptized by Jesus' love in order to have this open door to see the Lord the spirit of awakening over the land. I have witnessed after that miracles, signs and wonders uh, the outpouring intangible talk about the fire of God in ways we have never experienced in this past many years really contending for tangible 
presence of the Lord in Nazareth, you know, because of Nazareth being a place of unbelief, mm -hmm. uh, uh, being known uh, uh, where, you know, very few miracles have been, uh, been done there. Uh, uh, all of that, the Lord began to show me that I needed first to have a, a heart change that will break open the way for the spirit of revival to be poured out and a spirit of awakening would have a place of landing, which would be the unity between both the Jew and the Arab as key for this revival. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect profound rania would you share with us just briefly because we don't have that much long left unfortunately but um would you just share with us briefly i know when i was out there with you and you were sharing what happened when the arabic mothers and the jewish mothers began to reconcile and heal it's so moving and it will just give all of you hope of like how the lord's moving profoundly in israel you know we hear all of the things that we hear through the news but the lord is moving isn't he he's doing extraordinary things in israel and releasing her into her prophetic destiny more and more and more and the spirit of god is moving more and more powerfully among the youth etc but would you share the story that you shared with me ronnie about the women Yes, definitely. Uh, there's actually uh, the story of the women is, is very uh, precious to our hearts as, as the Lord began to speak about the role of women, importance of getting the mothers together, because when the yeah. mothers arise in the land, he said there would be safety in the land. And the mothers would be key for the safety of the land of Israel. And in fact, it is true for every land and nation. Yeah. And he shared yeah. with me about the role of the mothers in the land of Israel and how the mothers should arise for such a time like this as Deborah arose, a mother in Israel. And I'm a big fan of Deborah because I knew that the Lord wants to raise up Deborahs now uh, in this season. This mantle is still here in this land for the mothers of the land to pick it up for this in time anointing needed for the restoration of the family. And he showed me that this is an anointing of the Debras that will rise for such a time as this, as a company, as a clan of Debras coming together. How much more would it be so powerfully uh, 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 released in the land, this anointing, when both the Arab and the Jewish mothers come together? And, you know, as I always say this is uh, uh, it's very profound to know that Israel is a huge big mother. So think about Israel being a big, huge womb for the nations of the earth. Whatever is birthed here, whatever is conceived here, is, is going to influence all the nations of the earth. It's going to shift the history and the nations of the earth. And that's why we sense from the Lord, after beginning the, the work with the Arab women and, you know, mobilizing women, coming together in a place of, of worship, partnership, and, uh, 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 you know, equipping uh, uh, to see Arab women being released into their destiny by gathering them around conferences and gatherings called Arab Debras Arising, we sense that it's about time that both now the Jew and the Arab mothers to come together. And that we called it the Debra clan gathering, so that the two movements between both the Arab and the Jewish movements to converge together, this unity will birth the anointing that we regather the family, both the Jew and the Arab together, because this is the anointing of the mothers. This is what Jesus will do through the mothers of the land. Yeah. And so when we were together in this Debra clan gathering, I've asked my friend, uh, Chaya Mizrahi, a dear friend of mine, to partner together in bringing both the Jewish and the Arab. And in that moment of the gathering, there was so much love liquid pouring on both of us as mothers as we encounter the heart of Jesus for the land and for each other, for the destiny of each other, both the Arab and the Jew, uh, we sense that the Lord wanted us to do a, to, to stand together and do a covenant, make a covenant together. And that covenant is the covenant uh, 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 in the old story. There is a very powerful story of Ruth and Naomi. So thinking about the story of Ruth and Naomi, being a very uh, key uh, uh, story of redemption because two women chose to love each other. God yeah. restored the whole family and actually released the destiny of God. 
And ultimately, we know Ruth was was uh, was a Moabite. Naomi was a Jew, a Jewish mother. And if we think about it today in a modern modern day story, if Ruth was alive today, she would be a Moabite who came from Jordan. That means she would be an Arab Ruth. Thinking about that uh, in a modern day story, us in Nazareth being in the womb of the nation of Israel, the most ancient womb the place of conception, the place of birthing. Mothers carry the, the womb of God, carry the womb in intercession, coming together in unity, making a covenant as Ruth and Naomi, loving on each other. I remember when we stood on facing each other and I asked, you know, if the mothers would be willing to do that. I remember the Arab mothers took a, a, a necklace written on it, where you go, I will go. It's that vow that Ruth did to Naomi from Ruth 116. You know, where you die, I will die. Your people are my people. You know, when we stood together facing each other and the Arab mothers took the necklace and put it on the neck of our Jewish uh, sisters and said, where you go, I will go. We, we will be walking together. Where you die, I will die. Now, in, in response of this was a lot of, of course, tears and love and pouring on each other honor. The, one of our Jewish mothers, beautiful Jewish mother, took the mic and said, uh, our dear sisters, we want to say how much we love you and how much we are honored to have you part of our family. We cannot go without you. We need you in our family. We love you and we want you to be part of what we have in this land. They took the shehal, jishal, you know, each one of them took a scarf, covered one of the Arab mothers, declared the words from Ruth 2.12, where Boaz said these words to Ruth, may the Lord reward your labor, whom you have come to find shelter under the shadow of the God of Israel. And these, you know, these mothers just covering each other like this and declaring the love and the honor for each other that we make a covenant to stand as Ruth and Naomi, that we may see the destiny and the redemption of God, both Arab and Jew standing together has brought forth birth Obed, birth through deep worship, restoration to the whole family. Ultimately, of course, salvation and the Messiah came from the descendants of Ruth and Naomi. So this yeah. has been for us a pivotal, a very deep time of knitting hearts, Ruth, uh, Liz, and heart, hearts connecting. And really, I would say another a milestone in breaking open uh, a way for the family to get together in unity and deep hearts of love and appreciation for each other. Yes, it's just beautiful, so moving, so encouraging, so humbling, so exciting that you've been able to be strategic in facilitating that all coming from that initial encounter with Jesus, where he gave you his heart for his family, like he said, for his DNA family is just beautiful. And then of course, from all that you've been able to do, Rania, there's just been so much healing experience. He's restoring and ulti ultimately the purposes of God being brought back online as Arab and Jew in Christ now, one family in Christ restored to each other, those relationships are coming back online and the destiny that God's predestined for them to express is now being brought into position and able to be possible. Oh my gosh, I could talk to you for hours, Rania. It's just, be your life is so encouraging, so inspirational. It's just beautiful what your relationship with Jesus has produced and is producing. So so much for sharing and being on with us sharing just such treasure from your life from and how the lord's led you thank you so much thank you so much liz it's always an honor thank you oh so my much God. oh my we gosh love we, uh, uh, i love you too and all of you there and we will be just continuing to pray for you and pray for israel pray for the continuing of the reconciliation between jew and arab and the healing of the land healing of the hearts healing of the family healing of the land and ultimately bringing forth the lord's full purposes the, the prophetic destiny for israel to to manifest and so yeah so bless you and guys thank you so much as well for giving us your precious time i'm sure you really really were encouraged by that conversation and the lord can do the same for you if you have 
division in your families, if you have relationship breakdown, hostility, offense, pain, same Jesus can give you his heart and completely transform your situation too. And we're believing for that for you. Have the most amazing week. And I look forward to being with you again next Monday. God bless. Hi, if you really enjoyed today's show and you want to go deeper with Jesus and experience his love and his presence more than you ever have, then I have a present for you, a free gift. If you want to jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and just click on and sign up, then you will receive one of my teaching videos that I have created especially for you that will not only give you a few keys just very, very quickly that you can uh, utilize in your daily walk with the Lord, um, but also I'm going to take you there as well. So it's an activation. So yeah, so jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and you are going to be so blessed. <laughs>